What's up, guys? I am doing Instagram Live here with my friends at True Kava, and Cameron from the company is going to join in. He was just on the podcast, and I had so much feedback from the podcast. People just loved hearing about Kava, what it is, what it does, that I asked Cameron to come in and do an Instagram Live with us so we could answer some more questions about it. I'm asking myself and sort of publicly saying, I wonder if Kava is the next CBD oil. And I think it actually might be. Um, hey, Sir Toshi, love you back, man. And Mark, yo, and hi from Italy. Here we go. I'm seeing go live with you, Kava, right here. Here we go. All right. We've got both of us on. Yay. There's Nick, the dealer. I wonder what you deal, Nick. Hopefully coffee, right? So uh, there's Croatia. We've got Croatia, Brazil, Italy. Well, I'm up here in Canada, but I'm American from West Covina. Man, that's a, that's a tough country. All right. Here's a question from THR Circles. Brother Dave, does kava affect liver? Let's ask a kava expert. Dude, we got Finland, Mumbai, Poland. I love the international audience here. The world is going bulletproof. All right. Livers and kavas. Okay, liver and kava, right? So this is a big misnomer and it's a it's a context conversation, right? So the the short answer to this is that if you get the wrong material and if you get the wrong kava, if you get the wrong strains of kava and it's processed poorly, then it can affect the liver to some subtle degree and even that's been over accentuated. There was a there was a small situation that happened in Europe in the early 2000s. Um, where a small series of studies was conducted by a pharmaceutical company that basically extracted kava in a way that made it more of a pharmaceutical that isolated a couple of the constituents and used parts of the plant that contain aerial You know, those of you guys who follow this channel definitely uh -oh. know you guys what plant break up Is it breaking up? Yeah, it's breaking up. Here. You got Wi-Fi over there? Yeah, you know, let me see if I can get it better. A I can, bit. I'm going to fill in while he fixes his bandwidth. I'm going to fill in that answer because we talked about it on the podcast. Yeah. So if you use the wrong parts of the plant, it's bad for the liver. And a lot of times pharmaceutical companies or regulators will say, we don't know about that. We don't like it. And the, they'll find an impure example and then they'll say, therefore, it's all bad. The same thing happened even with basic amino acids for sleep. Someone made something that wasn't the amino acid. So then they banned tryptophan, the amino acid, which is present in food, because there was a problem making it. Um, and so I would say here with kava, there's no evidence that kava that's made with the right parts of the plant is good. Likewise, if you were to say wheat's bad for you, actually wheat is bad for you. But if you grind up the roots and the stalk, it's even worse for you than eating just the seeds, right? So you got to get the right parts. Absolutely. Can you guys hear me now? Am I good now? Yeah, you're much better now. So okay. I answered the question for you. And I've got a, a young biohacker who just joined us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's going to steal a bulletproof collagen bar. So uh, I just so any other eyes. questions here? Oh, here we go. Kava versus Fenibut. Oh, great question, actually. So Dave, you're familiar with Fenibut. Uh, so Fenibut is uh, it's a synthetic. It was developed by the Russians. and. Uh, it's, uh, it binds to the GABA receptors in the brain, so it, it, it enhances that, that system, that calming system that's the brakes of the nervous system, just like kava does. But you know, kava does it in more of a uh, regulatory, modulatory way, right? So it's kind of like we explained on the podcast, you guys can go listen to it, we explain the difference between pharmaceutical substances or pseudo-pharmaceutical substances and plant compounds. Mm. Uh, you know, Fenibut is, is a really interesting compound, and it, it, has, it has merit and usage in certain contexts, but um, it can elicit some tolerance issues whenever you take it back to back. And uh, there have been reports of, of some withdrawal symptoms, not as bad as like, like azepines, but, you know, with, with kava, there are none of those issues. We have a 3,000-year history of safe use with kava. So it's just one of those things that I always go to the plant compounds first, and for me, I got much better results off of kava than I did with Fenibut, especially if with, with, you know, sort of rehabilitating my system and getting off of benzoyl yeah. itself. So. Let, let me talk about Fenibut a little bit. So Fenibut is interesting. It's basically the GABA molecule, which is a, something that you make, you actually eat it, and it's something that you make to calm the brain down. And you add a phenol molecule to it, which makes it Fenibut, which the Russians invented a long time ago. And this makes it very long lasting in the brain. Now, this is a good thing, except 
that if you take it for too long as a three day half life, it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and it can be addictive and can be a real problem, except it's also really good if you take it every two or three days for sleep specifically. So it's one of those real powerful things that can be misused. And it's something that in the US is really in the gray zone. So I think we all have a right to buy stuff and use stuff like that. Um, just you have to know if you're taking Fenibut every night, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's a little bit of a, an issue there. But with Kava, it's not like that. Like I've been doing, since we sent this out in the Dave Asprey box, I have this curated box I've been sending out um, forever. So um, the Kava Plex. This is the stuff that you make, which is the oil. I take it every night. And guys, I'm not going to tell you everything that's back here, but do you see this incredible counter with the drug dealer scale, lots of Bulletproof products, and a whole bunch of other weird vials and stuff like that? I'm always hacking and all, but I'll tell you that the kava oil that you guys make have been, has been in my, uh, my stack for sleep for like the last probably two years now, maybe a year and a half. Um, so I think that stuff that really has proven to work with my Aura Ring. And uh, people are now saying, do I take Fenibut? I actually did for a while. I actually formulated some of the Fenibut years ago. The GABA um, wave. Yeah, GABA wave. And it had, you know, liposomal forms in it. But um, it's just, it's one of those things where it's, I, I just didn't want to, to get anywhere involved with people overusing it. So I made it taste really bad. <laughs> but it works really well. But I'm not in that, not in that business because it's just, it, there's just too many other good things you could do that don't have those issues like kava. So you, you take the kava and you, you feel really good uh, when you're um, uh, when you take it. It's not like a buzzy high. It's not even like an espresso kind of thing. Um, but I find it's, it's like a chill, relaxed thing on the podcast we recorded. I actually took one of the, the shooters you make the shots. Yeah. Just to see, hey, like I, I feel I feel good on it. Oh, Star Eye box link, DaveAspreyBox.com or at DaveAspreyBox. I'll put it here. So if you guys were subscribers, you would have already gotten some of this. Um, I'll put that in there. I just posted the comment with the name for it. Um, okay, question: Kava with GABA and melatonin. This is from Soul Eye Photos. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, so kava stacks well with almost anything that, that also enhances that pathway, right? So if you're going to, because kava has a modulatory kind of effect on that whole system, it helps, it helps upregulate, it helps with a lot of different, you know, sort of steps in that chemical sequence. So if you add GABA to it, then you're just adding more of the available neurotransmitter. And so it tends to intensify it a little bit. Um, you know, same thing with taurine or theanine or any of these sort of supplements that are in that wheelhouse, valerian root, chamomile, and that are all relatively mild compared to kava. Kava is like the powerhouse sort of GABA yeah. supplement, you know, just ultimate breaks for the nervous system. So yeah, they, they all okay. work together. They really do all the natural. Things. What wouldn't go well with kava? Um, well, uh, high doses of alcohol. <laughs> so you shouldn't get shitty drunk and take kava. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anything that's going to a small amount of it. I mean, I've talked to people who have stacked them together and you can get an enhancing effect. But for me, I have always used you know, kava as an alternative to alcohol because it gives me all the effects of alcohol without the drunkenness with the stronger forms of it. Uh, you know, so they don't they're generally not good companions. Um, a bunch of drugs. Obviously, those are things that you always consult your physician for, you know, you know before actually taking them. But that can be a problem. There's not really a whole lot of counterindications in, in natural things, in foods and stuff. Kava goes okay. really well with fats because fats in, enhance the absorption of it, especially saturated fats and MCT oil and things, because that helps you sort of get I, it into the brain. Cause I actually, I'll blend the oil that you guys make, the Kavaplex. I'll blend that into my Bulletproof sometimes just, just for fun. It's a, it's a, like a kind of a mellow, calming thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing a question here from... Uh, Iamon Taylor, best kava stack for sleep. And guys, I'm just going to point out, if you DM the word sleep to me, I'm doing a sleep challenge right now where I'm teaching you everything there is to know about sleep. Just DM sleep to me and I'll send you a link. And we actually talk about kava in that as one of the things you could do. We're talking about uh, the kava flex thing very specifically. So um, that would be a good way to learn more. My answer for kava stack for sleep is I do two full dropperfuls of kava flex before I go to bed. And then I take the, uh, the life cycle lion's mane mushroom extract. And then I take the sleep mode that I formulate for Bulletproof. 
and some different forms of magnesium and some other stuff. But the, that would be my, my primary sleep enhancement stack right there. But I, I, I really do this every night. It, it makes a difference for me. Yeah. I actually have used mm -hmm. that pretty much that same sleep stack. A lot of times I'll add um, another Chinese herb called Zizifus jujuba, which is a really, really good Chinese herb. I'll get it from a company called Lost Empire, and they create a concentrated powder. And I'll, I'll put that in my kava drinks that I make. And it really, they intensify um, uh, you know, each other because they both affect that pathway as well. And yeah, so that's good juju, not bad juju. Hmm? Good juju, not bad juju. Right. But that, that was just a, a bad joke. I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, question for you on, uh, does it affect the cannabinoid receptors? We don't have any evidence to suggest that it does yeah. bind to CB1 or CB2. Uh, it has effects as serotonergic effects. It has dopaminergic effects. So on serotonin and dopamine, GABA. It has effects on blocking ion channels like calcium channels, which is a neuroprotective thing. Um, and so it has a lot of these sort of neurostabilizing, sort of calming, um, in, in enhancing pathways. But we don't have anything to suggest it binds to cannabinoid receptors. Uh, you know, some people have hypothesized it, but we really don't have anything yet to suggest that. So it stacks well with CBD, actually, because right. that cannabinoid system is like the regulator of the regulators and calls like more directly the brakes. So if it blocks calcium channels, I haven't tried it for this, uh, but when I start flying again, one of the problems when you fly is you're getting lots of EMFs and you have low oxygen levels. So that ends up causing the EMFs cause the calcium uh, channels that are voltage gated to open up. So if you're lowering calcium in the cell with kava, maybe taking a shot of kava before you get on an airplane is not a bad idea. I could see doing that. Um, that makes sense. And Lisa says kava with brain octane. Absolutely. Brain octane helps most other oils get into the body. Yeah. Um, and question from Traveler of Love. Is there a bad time of day to take kava? I don't know the answer to that. I take it generally in the evenings and sometimes in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. That would all depend on the strain. Um, okay. You know, the strain that we use for our first two products, uh, the main one that we use in the kava plex is one called Baragu. And I, you know, we talked about on the podcast that there's daytime strains, there's nighttime strains, and there's some that are kind of in the middle that hit on sort of all of the effects without over accentuating too much of either one. And, and Baragu, you can take it any time of the day. It's going to give you that sort of what I call the Kava zone, which is like calm focus and that creative thinking. It's that really good zone for just functioning in a very calm way, but yet not a sleepy way but then it leads to a good sleep at night. And that's going to be what we want for versatility. There are some strains we'll be offering in the future that will be more just straight, very sedative strains for nighttime and some that are very nootropic and not even, you know, sedating at all. Um, but what we have right now, you can take pretty much any time of the day. That's, that's sort of what we were trying to shoot for anyway. So. All right, cool. Um, I've never taken this on waking up. I feel like I wouldn't need it, but um, you never know. So um, let's look for some other questions going through here. Hey, Willisness, you got to send me a direct message. Unfortunately, my thing that sends you the link can't do it. And you can't put links in the comments here, but only on a direct message. That's why you have to DM me. Um, how long does it take for bad oils to get out of the body once you stop consuming them? So this is probably less of a kava question because the kava oil is unlikely to be taken up in your cell membranes. But I will tell you from the books I've written, especially the last anti-aging book, the half-life of oils in the membrane of your body is about, is about two years. So when you quit being vegan, it's going to take you two years to build half your cell membranes with the right fats, and it's going to take another two years to get to 75%. And you're going to need ex basically overdoses of vitamin E during that time. Kava will probably help you with the inflammation that you got from eating n none of the right kinds of saturated fats. Um, but that's kind of how it, uh, how it works. Um, let's see, most budget friendly way to benefit from your kava for sleep. Um, this is from Dana in Austin. So what do you think about that? Most budget friendly way. Like, to like how little can you get away with? What time would you use it? Which form? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Okay. So um, depending on the product, I would say um, if you use the kava flex oil, which you're getting on average of about 30 dosages at one dropper full um, per bottle, um, I would always start just at one dropper full whenever you get it. You're gonna get, it's, it's full spectrum. So we don't you know, necessarily always use kava lactone dosages or amounts as an accurate representation of the potency because it's really about that entourage thing with kava. Um, but 
with, with one dropper full of the oil, you're getting about 75 milligrams of kava lactones plus other constituents, which gives it the, the full array of effects. And that's a good place to start. So you're going to have, if you use one dropper full, um, right, you know, probably about one to two hours before bed, then that's probably going to be the most economical way that you could start while still getting a, a good amount of the effects that you would want to get. Okay. And then go up from there, two, three, four droppers full if you wish, but that's going to give you a 30 day supply right there. So. So that's probably the best way is the Cavaplex oil. Yes. Here's a question well, from VSRV. I have no idea why that makes me think it must be from Russia. It just kind of sounds Russian. But the question is a little bit uh, about advanced biohacker. And by the way, Russians are amazingly good about biohackers, whether or not VSRV is from wherever. But Kava plus GABA, which is just the amino acid, not phenobute, plus DLPA, which is D-L-phenylalanine, good combination or bad combination for sleep? That's a, kind of an advanced sleep stack right there. Yeah, you know, so DLPA is going to be a, a, a dopamine precursor primarily, and then GABA is going to be, you know, providing GABA, which are two pathways that Kava already addresses. So not as much the DLPA for on the sleep side of things, probably. Definitely the GABA with the Kava on the sleep side. If you took it during the earlier part of the day, you wanted to get more of the mood-boosting effects and the nootropic effects. Kava is an MAOB, so it's going to prevent that excess dopamine that's being produced from being broken down. And you're given that amino acid, you know, the phenylalanine that's in there to sort of boost it. So that's a good combination there. Um, and then the GABA is a good combination for the sleep side. So the GABA and the Kava probably later in the day, the DLPA and the Kava probably earlier in the day. Okay, um, that, that makes good sense. I, DLPA is oftentimes a morning thing. Some people need more dopamine to sleep. So if DLPA works for your sleep, it's like, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty personalized on that front, I yeah. would say. It's not always stimulating. It's, yeah, so. All right. Does kava, this is from Travel Love, does kava have negative effects on the stomach? Like, is it acidic or something like that? <clears throat> um, so the only negative effects that we see from kava on the stomach are through the traditional preparation when you don't filter out the sort of fibers and the tannins, and especially if you get the wrong strains that have these defense alkaloids in them, these, these lectin-like compounds that are even stronger than lectin. So that can be egregious to the stomach. From, from an acidic standpoint, no. Whenever you process it like we are, we, we never really see any negative effects in the stomach, especially in the concentrations that we, that we use with it, so. Okay. Uh, Antonio says, why would you use drops of kava oil over powder? So if he's talking about powder like the traditional prep that you would squeeze into a strainer bag, it's, it's really just for versatility, ease of use, and to get out, you know, sort of what I just described, those excess plant root parts and tannins that can cause some roughage in the stomach as well. So it's, it's, to, um, it's, it's to mitigate any of the negative symptoms and to allow you to have it in a more versatile, easy to use form. Okay, so versatility. I actually like the oil a lot better. I've never been a big fan of just like straight up kava tea. A lot yeah. of time I, I don't feel fantastic from a gut perspective afterwards. Um, it mm -hmm. depends again on like what you're getting. Yeah. One of the thing, well, yeah. One of the issues I found um, just formulating for, for Bulletproof and over the years, if you're taking a jungle product <laughs> from a moist environment that's been dried somewhere and got sent somewhere else and was stored somewhere, uh, mycotoxins is going to be an issue and testing is not required. There's actually testing for mold that's in there, but whether toxins formed earlier, it oftentimes, these are parts per billion, parts per million levels. Um, for instance, I looked at at selling a mock-up product that I was putting together. And I tested like the highest in one I could find on the market as a supplier. And it was like 13 parts per million of aflatoxin. It was legal to sell, but I'm like, I'm not selling that. So one of the reasons I don't like, you know, so like kind of random powders is that you don't know what you're getting in the mushroom space. There's tons of people selling kind of cheap powders that are mostly like essentially the roots that aren't very effective. And they just make your coffee taste bad if you put it in there, but you don't get the kick. But the, the type of extract, whether it's kava, whether it's CBD, whether it's anything like that, when you pull it out, there's things you get with alcohol, things you get with heat, there's things you get with fat. And if you pull those out and throw away the rest, well, we've been spending a huge amount of time as humans learning how to cook, which is how you detoxify your food so you can eat it, which is pretty cool. Exactly. The key is, is pulling that stuff out without damaging it, right? That's something that we really had to yeah. dial yeah. to get and rid you, of those potential um, biological toxins. That was why I had you on the show um, on Bulletproof Radio. And if you guys are, are listening, if you go to Bulletproof Radio, just go, go Bulletproof Radio Kava, you'll find the, the show right away. Uh, we go into it because it's actually fascinating how Kava's made, where it comes from, 
and just the science of getting it right. And the same thing goes in the CBD space, like different strains of cannabis do different things to you and it, different extraction technologies do different things. So what I'm finding is it's not like, oh, I just like bought some and I, you know, threw it in some hot water and there you go. And yeah, you can make a, a mushroom tea or a kava tea or whatever that way. But if your results vary widely, it's like, is ditch weed the same as Kush? I, probably not. <laughs> Anyone who's tried both would know. Um, all right, a question here. Uh, how is kava? It's definitely not the same as kratom, which people are asking. Right. Um, but uh, are there any relationships between the two? No. Um, kratom is actually, it's, uh, it's a species called Mitrogena speciosa, and it's a, uh, it's a plant-based opioid that doesn't cause respiratory depression, but it can elicit a tolerance and withdrawal process a little bit worse than coffee um, at its worst, which is not that bad, but it still can be a little bit egregious. It's not like a tonic substance. It's more like an acutely medicinal substance that people use to get off of opiates. So it, it helps a lot with opiate withdrawal, as where kava helps a lot with benzodiazepine alcohol withdrawal. Kava helps with yeah. all of them because it calms things down. But yeah, so those are the main, main differences there. Okay, so basically pharmacology, stuff like that. So if you're trying to get off your benzos, kava could be a good thing. What if you're someone who really benefits from benzos? Is kava going to activate some of the same receptors? Yes, it, it activates the exact same receptors and more but without muddling up your brain chemistry, which happens in many cases with benzos, right? So it actually clears your mind at the same time as sort of enhancing those GABA receptors. And it doesn't, it doesn't downregulate and deplete. You know, these pharmaceutical drugs kind of work by releasing your stores of these neurotransmitters, kind of using them up. And so you have to take more over time. Kava kind of gives to your system. So it's like repleting it at the same time as washing over your system and giving you the therapeutic effects. So a lot of people, myself included, are finding that Kava is a great off ramp to those things uh, so that they don't get the long term side effects from taking benzos. They get a lot of the strengths and virtually none of the weaknesses. I love that. Uh, question from um, MM Wawa. I'm totally saying these names on because there's no more names left on Instagram. Um, it looks like it's a she probably it says, I've gotten a mouth numbing feeling from drinking kava tea, like getting a local anesthesia from the dentist. What is that caused by? Yeah. So that's the kava lactones interaction with your nerves. It only lasts a couple minutes or so. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a totally benign process. It, it lasts a very short period of time. Um, it's actually kind of interesting and cool. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really interesting process. It has to do with the inhibition of the nerves, but uh, it's, it's, it's totally benign, sort of natural process, so. Okay, cool. I've gotten that from mate de coca, which is uh -huh. coca leaf tea, which you yeah. can get down in South America. And that's, um, um, that's a totally different set of actions that are probably not legal in the US. Uh, but yeah. I did years ago and I went down there, I came over the border and I found I had a big bag of coca leaves in my pocket that I just forgot that I had. But fortunately, no one saw them because I don't think you can do that much. Um, question from Lisa, Lisa Red Wine. She says, uh, oh, do I get the fog when I wake up? I actually used to wake up with horrible brain fog and I don't at all anymore. That's why like, I'm doing the sleep challenge to teach people how to get a good night's sleep. Uh, I usually wake up even before the alarm. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. I don't think that ever be possible. But what you do before bedtime directly affects whether you get brain fog in the morning and whether you have mold in your house affects it. So one thing I am doing before bed that helps is I do two dropper fulls of Kava Plex. And guys, I'm, you know, relatively, I like to, I don't know, can you show up your bicep with your own phone? I'm relatively fit. The New York Times says I'm almost muscular. I'm about 210 pounds. I'm 6'4". Uh, and so given my size, and my metabolic rate, I burn about 3000 calories a day because of my metabolism works differently than most people's because I hacked it. Um, so for me, two dropper fulls is good. You might not need two dropper fulls. You might only need one if you're a normal size and weight and normal metabolism person. Oh, I'm getting some more questions uh, from Passions of the Cats. Uh, interactions with SSRI antidepressants. So there are no known counterindications, right, that we see in the literature or that we've seen anecdotally within our patient population, doctor's population. Um, but it's always one of those things, you've got to consult your physician before stacking these things. It's just something that we really need to tell people because I can't make any recommendations of two or two not to take it. But there's no known counterindication. Uh, we've seen lots of patients that have used it in the process of transitioning off, and we have seen tremendous success with that. Um, almost anything that elates brain chemistry from a pharmaceutical standpoint, kava kind of helps prop up that system and lower the limbic system activity or the stress response 
that's overactivated when trying to get off of them. So it's, it's something that a lot of people experiment with as an off ramp from those things uh, or along with them. Um, that's a, that's a beautiful answer there. Now, I think everyone who's listening has realized that you're a biohacker who knows more than about kava. Um, Jack Plumley just joined. Uh, we're talking about kava, which is a, a root and a tea that people take. I think it's going to be the next CBD oil. It's a traditional thing that people use to relax. So what I would, uh, uh, what I would suggest, you guys should definitely follow True Kava. Um, I, would, I like the Kavaplex. I really did notice on the podcast, I drank one of the shots for the first time. I really did notice the effect of that. It was, it was more powerful. Um, so I would say um, definitely, uh, definitely give it a shot. And do you have some kind of a special thing you want to give people? We didn't plan this. I just planned to talk to you because people were popular. But do you have some sort of like give them, give them a discount so that they'll pick some up because uh, people are watching the dollars today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can enter uh, day 15 at checkout and get 15% off. I think I'm Dave 15. I should have probably known that. Um, anyway, so you guys can save some money there. I'm going to type that here for you. Dave 15 code, uh, code at true Kava. And, uh, and guys, if you've just never tried the stuff at all, um, pick up the shots because they're very noticeable. Just, you know, try a couple of them and then get the oil i think for sleep it's very portable it's small it doesn't have a strong taste it's actually less of a taste than like cbd oil or something like that and you just uh um just put it on your tongue drink it you'll be fine try it blending into your bulletproof coffee it's actually pretty cool to do it doesn't change the flavor but there's like a, a smoothness that comes to how you feel from it and i just i think it's a very interesting um plant medicine that's been around for a very long time that's worthy of our attention and respect and frankly it's probably more worthy than this incredible obsession with cannabis All right so look endocannabinoid receptor cbd oil good thing but my god just because we weren't allowed to smoke it in high school doesn't mean that like you really need a cbd oil rice cake like people are right. going a little bit crazy on that stuff um some people don't feel one brand they feel another i think kava is, is just it's worth your attention try it and if it pushes your buttons some people are actually serotonin dominant, right? And if you're one of those people, um, then you probably are going to really benefit from this because you're the kind of person who would just go like benzos would be like life changing and addictive as all hell for you. So you oh. probably shouldn't go there for stress. But if the kava modulates those areas, like that's kind of a cool setup. So like you just give it a shot. And if it's worth it to you and all biohacks are like that, you try it. Did your ring tell you it was better? did you wake up without the brain fog? Did you wake up feeling like yourself? And like, wow, like, okay, I, I, it was worth it. The, the amount of money and time and energy that took me to put this, you know, into my body, did I get more out of it? And if so, like, I think I'm going to do this for another couple months. And it's the same with every supplement. And just because it worked for your, your husband, your wife, your friend, for me, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. But I think Kava is high enough up there on the usability and on the reliability scale that most people feel something. And if it's just something you needed to feel, maybe it belongs in your stack. That's why I'm you know, sharing the knowledge I feel. And I speak from a place, I mean, this whole project and my relationship with Kava came out of my own tremendous pain, years of being autoimmune, sick and having seizures and being in this perpetual state of intense anxiety. I tried medical cannabis. I tried every pharmaceutical is heavily addicted to benzodiazepines and finding Kava was just in the right forms. It's, you know, there's a lot of parallels between Dave, your and I's stories of like, you were sick, you were metabolically destroyed and you came across a type of coffee, you fine tuned it, it wasn't in the market. So you had the passion to bring it to the market because it actually worked. And yeah. I, from experience on this, and then we use the science to fill in the gaps and things, but you know, the market needs this and it's, it's a perfect, it's in that perfect zone of tolerability and therapeutic action, lack of side effects. It's, it's in a, a league of its own. It, it really is. I mean, it's, it's amazing stuff that the world needs for sure. All right, guys, I am going to wish you a wonderful day. Thank you for joining in. And if you haven't heard the podcast, listen to the podcast. If you haven't tried any Kava ever, try True Kava. They're going to give you 15% off code day of 15. Thanks, guys. T-R-U, T-R-U Kava, not T-R-U-E. Uh, oh, that's spelled wrong. T-R-U Kava. All right. Oh, no, it's spelled right. Like, just, just some people get it wrong sometimes. That's okay. Kind of Good deal. T-R-U, right. cool. Thanks, guys. Bye.